There are a few different very specific problems in and about the hip that we'd like to be able to clinically diagnose so we can focus our treatment. One of those is SI joint dysfunction. SI joint, we're going to have him turn around, is basically the junction of your sacrum, the mid, mid part of the lower body of your lumbar spine, and the iliac crest. At the sacroiliac junction, this can cause irritation and pain directly as you point over that area. A simple way to evaluate for SI joint dysfunction is to do a stork test or a single leg extension. So we'll have the patient stand on one leg, and we're going to have him arch backwards. If this causes pain directly at his SI joint on the ipsilateral side, the same side as the leg down, then I'm concerned about the possibility of SI joint pain. In addition, second part of the examination we can do as he's lying down. The second part of the examination for the sacroiliac joint is done with the patient supine. And what we'll do is we're going to do a flexion, abduction, and external rotation test. So basically we flex the knee, we abduct the leg, and we keep it in external rotation. I'm going to have my hand stabilizing the pelvis, and as I force the leg into this flexion, abduction, external position, if he has pain in the posterior aspect of his pelvis over his SI joint, that would be considered a positive Patrick test or a positive Faber test. The second thing that we can do is roll towards me is we can do a simple lateral compression test. Since the SI joint is actually part of the structures that stabilize the, the pelvis, if I can just lean on his pelvis, squishing it, squishing it against the bed, if he has pain at his SI joint, it's another finding consistent with SI joint pathology. Another common problem that we see in the hip about athletes is a problem called piriformis syndrome. Because of the extremes of demands in twisting and cutting sports, rotation about the hip can cause uh, irritation and strain of the piriformis muscle. The piriformis muscle sits back deep in the, in the buttocks posteriorly and actually can mimic sciatic nerve symptoms. So they'll have pain here in the buttocks and may have pain that shoots down the posterior aspect of their leg. So I'll palpate directly deep into this area. If that exacerbates their pain, I'll be concerned about the possibility of a piriformis syndrome. Lay on your back, please. Now, the piriformis is one of the strong external rotators uh, of, the, of the leg. So what I'll do is to, to actually now test the function of the piriformis, I'm going to have him flexed, and now I'm going to have him externally rotate his foot. So as he's externally rotating, which means he's pushing against the inside part of his ankle, externally rotating his, his femur, if that exacerbates his pain, that would be significant for a piriformis syndrome. You can also te put tension on the piriformis muscle by crossing the leg over into this significant flexed adducted position. It's going to put tension over the piriformis and may also cause pain if they had that problem. Perhaps one of the most concerning uh, because of the potential of catastrophe is a stress fracture uh, about the hip. Uh, if missed, a runner with a stress fracture may fracture all the way through and lead to avascular necrosis, arthritis over the long term uh, and really give themselves a, a crippling injury to their hip. To evaluate for a potential stress fracture, uh, most of the time they're going to have pain directly in their groin, which is around where the femoral neck is. Their pain primarily is not over the trochanter and is not in their buttocks. To evaluate the pain, uh, I'll, I'll try to do some percussion activities to see if the shock actually exacerbates their pain. To accomplish that, I'll actually do percussion with their leg in extension on the bottom of their heel. I can bend their knee and I'll do percussion down the femur, or I can actually percuss on the greater trochanter. Any of that shock would hopefully, if they had a stress fracture, exacerbate their pain. More commonly, their pain actually is exacerbated by extremes of range of motion, particularly with extremes of internal, or excuse me, external, as well as internal rotation of the hip. When they get into those extremes, it causes pain down, down deep inside their hip, directly in, in that area of the groin. You need to be very suspicious about the presence of a stress fracture. So any of those findings, whether it's percussion pain, pain on extremes of motion, pain with impact, patient probably should have additional studies, including radiographic studies, potentially a bone scan or an MRI scan to prove the diagnosis. Another area of common pathology in and about the hip is a problem we call snapping hip. Patients will complain of clunking or snapping in and about their hip, oftentimes associated with pain or with activities. To be able to clarify the diagnosis, we have to know that there's three common causes of a snapping hip. Iliopsoas snapping hip, snapping hip of the greater trochanter, 
as well as something internal in the ball and socket joint related either to a loose body or a, menis or, or a glenoid labrum tear. Each of those specific diagnoses will have pain in certain areas of the joint. Uh, if they have an iliopsoas snapping hip or a labral tear, their pain is going to be anterior in the groin. If they have a snapping hip over the greater trochanter, their pain is going to be out on the outside part. To evaluate uh, for a lateral band or IT band snapping hip, uh, we'll, pay, we'll palpate directly over the greater trochanter to see if they have pain. We'll actually have you rotate on your side, lay towards me, lay towards me if you will. And then what we can do is actually we'll put his knee now into his hip into extension and we can actually rotate his hip and if I can feel a snapping or popping as I'm, as I'm rotating his hip or he's able to recreate the snapping or popping over the outside part of his leg, that would be consistent with an IT band snapping hip. The other way to look for this is to do what we call an Ober's test. An Ober's test is done again with the knee in, flexion, in, in, in forced extension and then as we start to drop it and let his leg relax down, his IT band is so tight his knees will not come together. There's this space in between because he's tight over here. That's a finding that's consistent with an iliotibial band snapping hip. Lay back on your back again. The second area of problems we see for a snapping hip is from an iliopsoas tendon. The iliopsoas comes from inside the iliac crest and crosses over the, the crest or the, the brim of the pelvis itself. Uh, what happens is when patients usually flex and externally rotate, the tendon falls on one side of the pelvis and as they extend and, and internally rotate, the tendon falls on the other side. So when the patient is asked to reproduce that, start here and then bring your leg into flexion and internal rotation, bring it up, they're able to recreate a snapping and popping directly uh, in the front part of their groin. If they have that finding, it's consistent with an iliopsoas snapping hip. The last and probably uh, uh, area that we get con most concerned about is actually pain directly into the groin because of other intra-articular pathology, either a labral tear or a loose body. And we'll show you that examination in just a moment. Uh, the, the second diagnosis of a snapping hip is the iliopsoas. The iliopsoas is a muscle that actually begins uh, inside the pelvis and crosses over the brim of the pelvis uh, and inserts onto uh, the femoral neck and uh, just below the femoral neck at the uh, lesser trochanter of the hip. It serves as a flexor of the hip, so if you flex, that sometimes can cause pain if you have an iliopsoas snapping hip. But most commonly, athletes uh, will recreate their symptoms by actually flexing and externally rotate their hip, which actually brings the tendon on one side of a small bump of the pelvis, and then as they bring it into extension and internal rotation, they're actually able to recreate the popping. And so if you could start up here, just bring your leg into internal external rotation. If I feel a clunk and a pop in his groin when that goes on, I'm highly concerned of an iliopsoas snapping hip. We've now walked through two of the common diagnoses of a snapping hip, the greater trochanter snapping hip or iliotibial band, as well as of iliopsoas. The one, one the area that concerns me the most with snapping hip is actually intra-articular pathology. This is pathology related to loose bodies or potentially a labral tear of the glenoid, and we're going to show you that examination in just a moment.